ETN at technophilespodcast.com. I'm David Geisler, and this is the Technophiles Podcast. All right, everybody, we are back. This is part two of episode 295. I am here with the regular cast, v Lobs, Crystaline Malone, and Jake Gill. How's everybody doing? Was it a phenomenal break for oh, everyone? Yeah, absolutely Oof, incredible. Boy, I tell you, Lots of going. cat shenanigans. I'm ready to go. <laughs> cat shenanigans left, right, and center. It's always a good refresher. V. What's up? It's not your story. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> David's David not Lee. telling us apart today. I've got V and Crystal Lee swapped again today. Oh, man. That's all right. I was, I was Facebook living anyways. Maybe it's a hair. So uh, maybe it's a hair. Yeah, I did the wavy hair Oh, uh, Crystal Lee's talking about maybe doing bangs. Yeah, we talked about this. I'm actually going to commit now and not, like, get weirded out when my bangs hit the weird spot. What's I, the weird spot? What are you talking about? When like, they start into your eyes? out. Oh. Uh, like, a, like a bad half pipe. And you need, like, a, yeah. Yeah. You just gotta, <laughs> then, like, then I gotta really put, do that and put a tech deck in my hair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah a little clip on the front of my head. Yeah, it's important. <laughs> so, I am going to do it. I'm just too busy with school, so I'm just pretty much waiting to it can go be your VR mount when you're Wait, done using it. too busy them. with school to get a haircut? I don't need to give you a hard time. I'm sorry. <laughs> Keep pencils up there. There's one too many things on my brain that I have to take care of. So it's like, I will do well, it when the semester's over. It's Haircuts are always a good thing to like punctuate big events with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, mm-hmm. Fair enough. Chris Lee. Um, what are we talking about? We're talking about augmented reality yeah, which glasses is from Florida. Way more interesting. Than I was hair. trying to find a transition. I was like, <laughs> "All right, okay. what else happens to your head <laughs> space?" You put on these Speaking glasses on your and head. Okay, Chris so Lee, yeah. if you had bags, so do you think me, they'd get in the way? Let me just set this up real quick because yeah. I got to say, this story found me, not the other way around. Um, so it was user submitted. Sounds Luke, like a Luke rom-com. Thank you. Um, Found, I don't know where he found it, but he found it and like sent this in a private message. And he's like, you have to check this out. So I was like, okay, I go check it out. I'm like, oh, that's awesome. And then two days later, I go get my mail and I get my Wired magazine. And the yes. cover story is this company, these glasses that I submitted for this story. You so, have yeah. a physical magazine in the studio right now. I do. I have a, I have a physical magazine. What's that made of? Paper? Like- Yes, this is a pre-internet technology. I'm so wait, wanna, hold up. Can you get like, the hyperlink? Kind of yeah. feels like trees. Uh, yeah. They're broken. The links are all right, broken. Can I save this? Can I? <laughs> Server must be down. Yep. Can I save that? Um, Darn internet. Uh, so yeah, so I felt like this story was kind of stalking me. Yeah. Um, yeah, but here, here's what it is. There's this startup in Florida, not Silicon Valley. Um, and uh, Weird already. Right? Yeah. But actually, so here, the founder, like part of his not going to Silicon Valley is because he, during some interview, I can't remember, said something like, well, he wants to prove that Silicon Valley is an ethos, I think is the word he used, not a location. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Or maybe he said culture, not no, a location. I can kind of get behind that. Whatever. Yeah, I, think that. I think it's also twofold. I think that he wants to prevent, quote, from the article, Silicon Valley leakage. Sure. Oh. Because it's so... They are working on some sick stuff. Yeah. It is very secretive. They do not want people knowing... And people, I mean, there are so many companies that are started by someone who used to work for another company that right. did something similar. Yeah. Right. So um, Android. Well, just yeah. and so un- unfortunately for this show, they won't talk about the science behind Magic Leap. Sure. Okay. Ooh. So oh. we're, we're not going to be able to get too mm-hmm. hard into the facts with the actual technology here. Nope. Um, Only the alligators know. But yeah, only the alligators know. <laughs> but basically, <laughs> what this is is um, mixed reality. That's what he's calling it. Different from virtual reality and different from augmented reality. My take is that it's augmented reality. So, what does he mean by mixed reality? So, here's what he means. So, the distinction they're making is with augmented reality, um, you like Google Glass, you can see through it, but it's overlaid on reality. It's like a screen that you're just seeing through. Okay. I take issue with that assessment. But I'll, let's, let's, I'll hear you out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, with the mixed reality, what the claim is that there's that, but then you can also run programs where what you are seeing will actually react to the physical environment. Augmented reality, what you're seeing, can't interact with the physical environment. We're going to get into semantics here, but augmented reality is definitively exactly what you're saying that he's saying. 
that mm-hmm. uh, true augmented. So Google Glass was never augmented reality. It was really just heads up display. Yeah. Augmented reality is when you can just look at your wall and then a screen goes on your wall and something floats in the middle of your room. That is the augmented reality technology. And it sounds like that's what he's saying mixed reality is. But I don't want to. I don't want to focus on it because that, that's not the point sure. here. And whatever if they're calling it mixed reality, maybe there's a couple extra variables. But well, and maybe most importantly, I want to make sure that we clarify that Google Glass was not augmented reality. Well, maybe that's what they're going for there. Yeah. It's like, hey, this is not glass. This is not HUD. It. Right. It's not a heads up display. You are, yeah. you know. It's well, and maybe, maybe the difference is that this is what augmented reality was meant to be, but didn't reach it. And so they're trying to distinguish it by calling it something different. Mm-hmm. I'm just guessing yeah, here. That's fine. Um, because they are, um, you know, like we watched the video during, during the break, right? And this is... Um, claiming to, and it appears to be going beyond what we've had so far. So when I watched that video, it was definitively augmented reality to me, but I'm going to drop it after this. Maybe it's a branding thing. It might be a branding thing, but still what they're doing is fantastic. Yes, yes it is. And And it was really cool, right? When we first started watching the video over the break, I Mm -hmm. said like, well, it's really basically just screens floating. And then almost as soon as I said that, there were representations of it not be, you know, like there's yeah, like it's like a three D image. It kind of cracks me up when people like download Oculus Rift mods where they just basically bring up like their Windows Ten yeah. screen yeah. floating yeah. in space. They're like, look, I'm in virtual reality. It's like, well, right. Guess right. what? You just spent nine hundred dollars to look at a screen, you know. And right. what they're doing here is not that. Right, it's because past it, that. it look it, it is. It definitely is, and it looks if it lives up to this video. I don't, obviously, we don't know if they did any post production tweaking on the way it was looking. Um, but I mean, it, it looks sweet. I mean, this, this looks like, um, what did you say, Jake? Minority report, sort of like oh, coming sure. up here and things are flying yeah. all over. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing that I'm wondering about, and this is what I read was just skirting this, but didn't directly say it. What if the difference here is going to be something like I'm imagining the story talks something about like, uh, this guy um, walking into a room, he sees a robot, comes in through the walls, you can shoot the robots, blah, blah, blah. What if by hiding behind a chair, the chair blocks the bullets from the robot? Oh, sure, of course, right. Right? I mean, that could I mean, be... That's like HoloLens is doing that. So well, Right, right, but that's beyond the screen, right? Because that is, this chair that's... is now a part of the game because it is blocking oh. the bullets. Do you see yep. what I'm saying? Okay. Can, I, can we go back to the augmented mixed reality thing here, though? Because I'm, I'm looking at this article yeah. uh, that Chris Lee talked about, and I'm just going to read from this because they're talking about this, like, digital live artist, digital music venue experience, okay? And this is what they say. Digital live artist experience will beam artists in full scale and digital presence into your home, enabling you and your friends to enjoy a personal concert at home from your favorite band right okay that's fine on the other hand digital music venue will beam you and your friends to the digital place of the concert that's being held that's kind of cool so now you're not in i mean you're in your room but because of whatever you're wearing right now you're actually at the concert is that to say and your friends are at the concert and other people are at the concert oh i don't know but Hmm. from your perspective you're now there not here and maybe that's what that's could what we about. Yeah. Could because be. now we're just going beyond whatever the room is and just saying, you know what? I'm going to trick your mixed, brain. Oh, mixed reality. Sure. Yeah. Doesn't it, It's somewhere in between virtual and augmented, I suppose. I, th- I think that's the impression that I'm getting. That would be mixed, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah. Obviously. So, uh-huh. interesting. I want to ask a question because since you asked about, like, are, are you seen in the venue, for the user standpoint, I don't think that matters. What what what? Well, if you're if you're doing the music venue, right? Do you care if you're represented at the place? No, because you're getting your experience, right? Well, so I think that sometimes you could care because, like, okay, so if it's an augmented reality, this is very interesting to me right now, and I'm not trying to just draw straws, um, Jake. What you based on what you just read? If it's augmented reality and you want that perform, you know, some you know some performer does a v- augmented reality concert, right? And mm-hmm. they stand in some stage where there's a hundred cameras around them and whatever so that everybody can like buy their augmented reality tickets and have whoever that artist is stand in their living room and they can watch that artist as if they're six feet away from them that's fantastic that's augmented reality Mm -hmm. the mixed reality then is yes of course as you just said maybe you look to the left and to the right and you see some of your friends or other people who are also watching a little bit like a multiplayer racing game or you know or something like that 
um, we've all joined in, and now we're in this right. other space together. So let me ask you that, or let me let me put this out there then, Crystal Lee. Is it more fun to do time trials with ghosts or to be doing multiplayer racing? I think it's more fun to be doing multiplayer racing. Yes. And so maybe it could maybe be more entertaining and more fulfilling to also be looking at this person now with your friends standing around them as well or something. That's all I'm going with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I, I do. I think I see your, your point there. Um, I just, I, I guess what I meant was this would still be really cool even if I couldn't oh, yeah. look over oh, yeah. to my yeah. friend. The bottom of I the mean, scale like, of this thing is still awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right, exactly. It'd be more like I would still lay down the cash yeah. But here on TPN, we're, we're a little greedy. We want we want it all. <laughs> true, true. <laughs> and actually, Chris Lee, Maybe I referenced be... Iron Man where it was like, I mean, Minority Court was cool, but I think Iron Man was like, he, he was blowing up. up engines and yeah. like getting inside of them. Yeah. And Oh, yes, you're yeah, right. It was Iron Man. I do the Minority Report comparisons a lot. Okay. Um, but yeah, you're right. I also want Jarvis. Who yes. doesn't? No, we all oh want Jarvis. God. I want yeah. Jarvis so bad I made Siri have a British accent male just so it could be closer to Jarvis. Oh, nice. And how's it? It's, it's, like, it's like discount Jarvis. <laughs> <laughs> it's Jarvis. <laughs> so anyway, what else are they planning here? Because this is actually really um, interesting. So there... Is there a timeline or anything? Well, yeah. Okay. So it's going to be released at CES in 2017. Mm -hmm. Or that's the plan. Wow. Yes. That's yes. soon. Sure. It, it is, but it's not, right? Like, I read that and I'm like, oh, that, for tech-wise, it's really soon. But at the same time, I'm like, I got to wait that long. Yeah. Oh, I want to just to see it. Oh. Like, uh, what about That's next week? I, I'm free next smokes. week if you guys want to drop this. Oh. Yeah. Oh, we don't even know. Like, they, they could be done already and they're just like I think season stuff. 12, we go full mixed reality for technophiles. Sweet. We just yeah. output mixed reality. All right. Time, you, yes. you laid out all the cash to <laughs> arrange this. This is like a six-year plan. Six-year plan. Okay, we'll we'll just there. email right. them and they'll you be know, like, though, yeah, like, sure. if, yeah. dude, that would be a thing. They'd be like, use us. Test by the hell yeah, is the guinea pigs. We don't care. Yeah, yeah. I'd be so into it. Anyway, what was that, Jake? Um, I mean, so we're going to be potentially maybe seeing something like they're talking about technology. Uh, we have planned to end of 2016. We get our demo. Mm -hmm. 2017, like it's going. I mean, at this point, they, they are probably very, very, very far down the production line and getting ready for this thing. So... What are we on season eight right now? It could be before season twelve. I mean, this could just explode yeah. Yeah. I wasn't, right away. I wasn't. I didn't feel like I was. It was a joke, but I didn't feel like I was like exaggerating to say season twelve. I'm saying like, maybe yeah. it's like yeah. season sooner. ten, season ten, yeah, which is two years from now. Maybe. But yeah. No. Yeah. Right. Right. Who knows? Um, I think so. There's not. Uh, I'm trying. I'm trying to remember exactly. I think that is it as far as the timeline like that was the only announcement being made right now um like i said earlier with them not wanting to talk about the science they're they're holding a lot of their cards really close to their chest so they're doing these interviews and they're like putting those teasers out there but they are being real careful about the information mm -hmm. um they uh yeah well this is kind of that moment where they can make right. or break it this is where things yes yes, yes i absolutely agree never get it right uh, one thing mm -hmm. that i do <clears throat> wonder um and it wasn't really fully addressed in i or I, I read like three different articles i don't it wasn't really addressed in any of them um a couple of them made reference to google glass which is you know Stupid. not even yeah not no this close. is close this is like for me this is closer to hololens yes but what i'm wondering is because this because these are glasses because you can see through them you could be wearing these and walking down the street now what i'm wondering is can i get them in prescription uh, all four of us are going to need that. Yeah, oh right. Um, I'm not sure. I would yes. assume that would be an option. But what here's what I'm wondering. Stylish clip-ons. People, a lot of people got really <laughs> creeped out about Google Glass. Yeah. And I'm yeah. wondering if there's any plans to head that off with these. Like, that was not discussed. Uh, but that was that was something I wondered. Because I want these, I would love to walk down the street wearing them, but I'm wondering if I'm going to then creep out people who I might be passing. Well, the thing with Google Glass is Google Glass kind of like sold this world where everything was going to be augmented reality. Like kind of what we're seeing with HoloLens and even with this company now, Google Glass sold itself as if it was going to be that. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, I've worn Google Glass personally. I know plenty of people have, but like at the end of the day, it really was just a watch face floating in front of your eye. It was stupid. Yes. And it had nothing to do with the environment around you. Um, mm -hmm. 
So I think when that didn't deliver, Google shifted over a little bit and said like, oh, but you can also use the camera. You can also do social stuff. Mm-hmm. And then when yeah. that happened, that backfired and people were it like, did. hey, now what now? You're mm-hmm. going to be recording me all the time? Yeah. Like, I feel like that was like a, I feel like that was supposed to be a secondary feature. But when, but like, yeah. you know what I mean? So if this thing, if the camera on this thing is the secondary feature, it's probably not even part of the plan, but I'm just speculating. But I mean, guess what? That was like, what? When was Google Glass kind of first announced where people were hiding three years ago three years ago so now like four years ago so we have periscope we have facebook live we have all these things where like everyone's okay with it now right i know i mean obviously not everyone in the second there are limitations but google glass they had to put a little red light when it was recording so people Mm -hmm. would know because there was like creepos that were just like taking people and stuff but um there's a legit episode in the technophiles podcast four years ago where we like lost our minds for google glass basically expecting the very conversation we're having right now yeah you know and then there was like another a year later there was another conversation that was like ooh are you losing your mind now seeing these videos so like so here's the thing I will say this uh, we every three months we have another augmented reality is going to change the world story on mm-hmm. this show mm-hmm. and I'm optimistic and I believe in augmented reality as a technology I believe in it I think more than I believe in virtual reality and I'm even a fan of virtual reality you know what I mean I really think augmented reality is going to be the thing that really unless we do go full into the other thing but I think we're going to be living as long as we are still feeling and touching and sweating and breathing I think augmented reality is going to be things which why be wouldn't th- we want to and we have a lot of senses. Let's use them. Well, I kind of right. Like, let's put. Yeah, right. Okay. So, so until we get the suits, am I losing my mind right ready now? Clear on. Right, right. And I even think like we're going to skip the suits. I think we're going to kind of go into that thing where it's just going into brain implants by the time we virtual reality thing really happens. That's twenty yeah. years from now or whatever. But that's not really part of this conversation right now. And then we can live in pods, and then the robots can harvest our bodies for batteries. That's what it's like. <laughs> then, that's yeah. like. Well, what they right. already are. Like, didn't Neil deGrasse Tyson say like, "Hey, this we could just be." in a computer we could already be yeah Yeah. I know yeah so I mean but as far as augmented reality goes am I losing my mind right now I have over the last four or five years personally just as a host of this show I've gone from every single time there's an AR story from losing my mind we're getting a little bit more mature now with sure. uh, taking in this information, yeah. seeing let's the see trend, it, let's use it, let's seeing go what has there. worked, yeah. seeing what hasn't, sure. seeing how HoloLens is significantly better than Google Glass, but mm-hmm. also still seeing HoloLens's limitations. Yes. You know what I mean? It's like we, we can, you start to, when you start seeing those arcs. And so I find myself right now, Jake, based on your you asking me, like I find myself being very excited and optimistic, but okay. I'm definitely not losing my mind. Well, and okay, so for me, even though I've been following all of this stuff, um, the other thing, I really, really like this and it looks really cool. I really want it. However, at the same time, my, I guess, second thought when I read this is Google Glass cost $1,500. I'm going to just back off of this because... Research grant. I... (laughs) Come on. Yes. Okay. Uh, we'll. Uh, Don't worry. Maybe yeah, but it was really figured out in yeah. your outro. All right. It's we'll cool. It out it's cool. All right. Yeah. But yeah. But that's what I was worried about. But yeah. here's they the thing. A, let's say they don't have a price for this yet or anything. No, they don't. Mm-hmm. But let's say I, hypothetically, let's say I did get a research grant, right? Um, I'm a very social person, and if I don't have friends, at least a couple friends who also have this thing, mm-hmm. I think I'm going to use it less. Sure. So that'd be a, but yeah, that'd my be research really... grant needs to cover at least three. So I at least have two friends. Yeah. <laughs> Technophiles research grant. How about that? Boom. A joint project between right, UWM in. and uh, the Technophiles. We'll get four glasses. <clears throat> yeah. There you go. Mm-hmm. It'll be a Patreon goal. No, that's a Kickstarter. Yeah. Because, that's because, a Kickstarter, yeah. not a Patreon. Yeah. <laughs> what? We're getting, uh, we're getting uh, into weird space here. All we, yeah, are we are getting weird space. Anyway. So, so, I mean, what really so talking I about really want one. Really what you're saying is, it sounds like what you're really saying is like, you know, you hope this is not $1,500. And that's kind of the thing that's making Oculus Rift work in the virtual reality space mm-hmm. is that there, you know, we had the article about pe- people thinking it was a little too expensive a few months ago, yeah. but ultimately it's not $1,500 and it's sure. only going to get cheaper. And that's Facebook's plan with but Oculus that's a Rift. that's why, isn't it? What? You want Oculus Rift, like you need next generation video card. You need everything. Like it is more than $1,500 to get an Oculus Rift to really work at oh, home. Oh, I yeah. see what you're saying. So that's, it's a lie. That's the deal. So I mean, really, if you have the $2,000 computer, then you can run the Oculus $600. Oculus Rift is $600. Yeah, that's fair. If you don't, go out and spend $2,600. I mean, you have a point there. You really do. Well, and I guess part of what I was saying was it wasn't just the I'm hoping it's not $1,500. It's, I'm hoping that they are accounting for all of the problems Google Glass had. 
Because sure. you had the creep factor, you had the price point, you sure. had, there was many, many problems. Well, and they've um, had three years to right. hear a lot of well, this stuff, which like, is so no, one's out, no one's freaking out about the cameras on HoloLens. At least that I know of. I don't see articles trending on my Facebook or my other news sure, sources. True, but that's, the HoloLens doesn't seem like it's something to be worn out in public. It seems like something you put on in your house. In your room. Yeah, yeah and I didn't I've think seen. that this was out That's in a very good point. Either. In fact, the HoloLens, I think, requires being in a room. Yeah, like it has to link to a like server it has to, well, I think, or a Well, I think it has to be in a room because it has to, a bit like the Vive, it has to go out and feel the room to yeah. know its dimensions. Sure. Mm-hmm. And this seems to be similar, though. Yeah, that's... I, what, yeah. I'm Sorry. not so sure. <clears throat> or at least it sounds like they're talking about eventually it wouldn't be. Mm-hmm. That it would be able to handle walking around in public. But the other thing with any of that, I mean, I have seen Google Glass while walking down the street, right? Like I've never seen, I've, I've, I've seen Oculus Rift and some of the other things in person, but never, you know, I've never seen anyone walking down the street with an Oculus Rift or HoloLens or anything else. Right? Yeah, yeah, Obviously, right. you can't. Um, but... I don't know. So, Maybe I mean, it's not an issue. Do we know? Do we know anything about what this device is, though? <laughs> like, are, are I mean, is it just going to be like glasses? Uh, give give um, us a picture here, Chris. At least something. Yeah. Let me let me see if I if am, page through that because I'm just wondering: am I magazine? connected to something, or I can or can object. I literally go anywhere? And we're going. We're crossing that line of speculation into like it's, yeah, fantasy land here. So it's it's hard to say because they're keeping it so close. But they yeah. were talking about like you could definitely go walk somewhere anywhere. I know okay. there's a picture because the, the well. So just to clarify for like, for people listening, the video video we watched was just a room and things were happening inside of it like there's the lens this is definitely meant for oh, that's, i can totally get that prescription you Let are me see. not oh yeah um okay like that's what went in, in his hand right there yeah that's the lens of the glass interesting so i mean it's definitely made for no it's, whether or we're not we're basically looking at a picture of a guy holding like a normal glass lens yeah for i mean they, they, mm-hmm. it looks like glasses i'm trying to see now, if there's a whole i can't imagine the technologies in that though right jake they got to be projecting right. on that's that, what like i'm saying Google glass. Yeah. so you know like i said based like on the video we watch it. it's only in a room it, it'll it'll be fantastic if it can be anywhere that you go mm-hmm. um like I, i'm I think really curious just don't how well yet. it would work in like sunlight so this is how i would get this is what i would guess if you're going to do like the vive thing where it's it's pinging out to the room and feeling the room that it's in fine so when you're in close quarters it can get so it's a little bit like how self-driving cars how they work so a self-driving car knows where it is on the globe with gps but knows where it is within inches by using all of its laser sensors around it right Mm -hmm. it doesn't know where it is within inches just by using gps is my point. Mm -hmm. So if this thing can, or any of these devices, any of these augmented reality devices, if they can know where they are on a city street using GPS, but then you know, bring that resolution in by one or two feet yeah. by just feeling buildings next to them and well, moving along. Yeah, yeah. Okay, there might be something there. Mm-hmm. All right. So and that's for any of these devices. Th- this isn't going to re- be a full answer to your question, but maybe that is on purpose, a part of the not putting out information. They keep focusing on all three of these articles about how the lens is see through. It's just like glasses. You could, you know, walk around with it without bumping into anything. However, mm-hmm. all the pictures are people in room, and all the pictures are set up in such that you can't tell if they are also plugged into something. Right. So it could be that they are focusing on the lens because they're hoping people are making the assumptions that I was making. 2017. That you could walk around because you can see it. 2017 is a ways away, Mm -hmm. but we do know definitively now, like there are HoloLenses out there. There are real ones that are out there and we know that they are self sustainable or self contained Mm -hmm. and they're not tiny. They're fairly comfortable to wear from everything you can tell, but they're mm-hmm. they're a bit like they're a bit like a virtual boy right now. Maybe yeah. a little bit smaller. Little you know what I mean? Deep. I was <laughs> actually really laughing before we started the show because I saw that and I was like, "Oh look, Oculus Rift! <laughs> yeah, this Rift that's back there." I, can, <laughs> I know. So we look, keep that up there just as like a, a reminder of me, what we thought virtual reality sorry, was in the right '90s. Now. We got so mad about it, we threw our books on the <laughs> ground back in the '90s. <laughs> so let me just throw this out as a hypothetical. Yeah. So yeah, you need computer processing minute, but... power and everything right, but that there's no reason that couldn't be a pack that you clip on your belt and then have True. just a small 
ball wire, like a headpiece going up to your glasses, yeah. and yeah. then you can or easily walk Bluetooth around. Or a mobile app on your phone. Okay. Yeah, that's really probably where it goes. Supercomputer at yeah. this point, right? Yeah, it's gonna True. be it's gonna be yeah. like a smartwatch, but yeah. glasses. I love that statistic. It's almost an old statistic now, where like the the iPhone four had more processing power than all of NASA when we landed on the moon. That's kind of a cool little thing to think yeah. about. It's insane. Like one iPhone four, but that's that's not because the iPhone four is amazing. That's just technology. Right. Right. Yeah. Wait, an iPhone four is so old it doesn't even run half the apps we have anymore. <laughs> well, yeah. All right, let's go to break here, and we're going to come back. Part three, Jake. We're going to be talking all about the sign language gloves that yep. speak English as you sign, which is cool. Which is kind of a connection to the leap motion uh, episode that we had a few years ago, which I think none of you were on. Actually, I think this was Tina and Sean back then. This is two or three seasons ago. Maybe I'll bring it up, but I won't derail us. Um, for now. V, uh, we're going to go to break yeah. and we'll see you on the other side. Sound yeah. good? Yeah, that sounds good. Crystal, you too? Yeah. And Jake? That sounds perfect. Right, I'm glad we have a, yeah. well, a quorum here. <laughs> Come to an agreement. See we're you on the other side. Agreement. See you on the other side of the part. It's agreed. However, V, if people want to tweet you <laughs> about that. They can, do, they can do that at bear underscore Annika. Yeah, excellent. And Crystal Lee, if people also receive physical Wired magazines in the mail, they can tweet you about that at? You can tweet me at GamerAnthro. Marvelous. And Jake, um, I don't know. I don't know. If they want to tweet you about what? Um. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, Putting I mean, scritter so into augmented oh, reality. Yeah, yeah. No, if scritter you, and augmented if reality. If we want to talk about that, let's do it. If we want to, if we want to, you know, formulate some ideas about how, how we can work? get in. No, 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 no. How can we can get in on Chris Lee's grant? There Research it is. Grant. They yes. can talk. They can talk to me. There it you is. You know, we'll we'll work on it and give it to her, and then she can she can ship it off to I to get it. the ducats. Uh, yeah, you can talk to me on uh, on Twitter at critical owl. Excellent. We also love when people tweet us uh, the show at Technophiles Pod or find us on iTunes, Stitcher. And it's always hard for me to say Stitcher now that you're on the show, Jake. Because I always think Scritter. <laughs> I love it. You can find us on Scritter, absolutely. <laughs> um, you can find us on iTunes, Facebook, and Stitcher by searching Technophiles or go to our actual website, technophilespodcast.com to, to check out all of our episodes. Um, also, you can find me on Twitter. My name is David Geiser. You can find me at Raptor Paint. See you guys in part three. Mm-hmm.